everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Ray and today we're back for another installment of The Weird and Wacky with Mr. Ray. Say hello, Mr. Ray. Hi everybody. Uh, this is the second part of the Skinwalker Ranch series. Yep. And if you're looking for anything that I'm using in this video, please check out the description box. Uh, just, yeah, I've got everything listed there, but we're going to get right into it. Is it going to get cheesy? Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, it is, it is, there's a lot. It is, it is, just say it is. Oh, there's a lot, there's <laughs> a lot to, there's a lot to talk about, yeah. Woo! I mean, we got through the boring stuff last time. Okay. And then someone, I hadn't gone, a lot of people in the comments were talking about the Skinwalker Ranch, um, documentary thing that's on, is it on Amazon? Well, it's, it's. It's on, it's on now, which is Sky TV over here. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... HBO, maybe? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think they have a lot of deals with those guys, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I, I watched it, and it's... Pr pretty much what they're doing is kind of like what these NIDS guys... So they come into the story now. Okay. And pretty much what they're doing is, is what these guys are doing, you know? If you haven't seen part one, I'll have it linked. So go check that out. And if you are new here and you've never been here before... This is a this is a thing that we do every week where I diamond paint and James tells me about stuff that I've never heard of before and we're we're on the Skinwalker Ranch thing and I'm a little bit scared but anyway yeah so I mean when last we we were talking they had had a few experiences with TikTok type UFOs on the property TikTok or TikTok TikTok sorry <laughs> Tic Tac type UFOs. Tic Tac. It would actually be brilliant if it was just UFOs doing those dances, the dance. doing the dances, <laughs> like that. Big, like so, the the last time, the, the last story that we we had ended on was when the um, administrator from another dimension got out of the RV and started walking towards the house, he's and she was just tall. looking at him, and he was seven feet tall, and he's wearing this really weird kind of suit. And he gets up on the, the thing and she's just like, I'll oh, pull down the blinds and lock the doors, Quick. you know. And then she realizes why there's locks on the inside of the house, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I mentioned it the last time as well. Like when they signed the when they signed the um, the paperwork to, to buy the property mm -hmm. and there was a stipulation in the um, in it that they, they weren't allowed to dig anywhere on the property without getting prior permission from the old owners. Oh, and a lot of people say that that's because, you know, it's, there's a lot of hydrocarbons, like, you know, I, I don't even know if it's for gas and oil and stuff, but there's, there's those kind of resources, you know, those petrochemical kind of resources okay. in that area. So it was explained to them that, uh, it's probably just a stipulation about that, you know? Mm -hmm. But I mean, I don't know if you know anything about like uh, ranching or farming or anything, but not being allowed to actually excavate anywhere on the land is a little bit unreasonable because that's the kind of thing you would be doing, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know about this area, but in Ireland, you would definitely be digging drains all the time or, you know, re-clearing them or, you know. Yeah. Um, even putting in, even something like putting in uh, some farm buildings is going to require some excavation for footings and stuff, you know? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. So, um... So that was one of the that was one of the strange stipulations, and then of course there's the locks on the on the insides and outsides of the doors and windows in the property, all of these kind of things. Right. You know, but what we didn't talk about the last time, um, and I think we'll start there, is the unusual um, globes, blue and white glowing orbs. Mm -hmm. You know, now they kind of vary in size, mm -hmm. but they can be like the size of a baseball. All the way up to kind of the size of a basketball, you know? Okay. And what it is, is that, like, there's a story very early in it where Ellen, um, the mother, you know, mm -hmm. of the family, she's out walking and it's kind of just at kind of dusk, you know? Mm -hmm. And she's just kind of walking out and she hears this whoosh, go right past her ear. Hmm. And she thought, oh, that's like a bat or a bird or something, you know? Right. And then it goes whoosh, again. And then she sees these little white orbs and they're kind of following her around and, and flying around her and stuff you know weird yeah um so they can't figure out these 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 orbs you know mm -hmm. um and and they do seem to be everywhere 
And do you remember what, do you remember I was saying like that, that the property is kind of like the house that there's three houses on the property, you know, Okay. but the one that they're living in, it's got the barn and the corral and then kind of down the end of the, of the homestead, we'll call it, you know, mm -hmm. area. There's a kind of like a, a cusp of, of cottonwood trees, you know, mm -hmm. they seem to appear around the cottonwood trees all the time, hmm. you know, um, and what it is, is you'll just see these orbs like while you're out at dusk or whatever, you'll just see these blue and white orbs dancing around Will-o'-the-Wisp style, you know? Weird. Yeah, but it's a, cl it's a classic, um, it's a classic UFO thing as well, you know? Is it? Yeah, yeah, these kind of orbs that are about the size of a sports ball of some sort, you know, <laughs> flying around. A lot of the, a lot of the shaky video of UFOs and stuff that you get are probably these, you know. Hmm. And they're what um, J. Allen Hynek would have like, you know, comically described as like, um, you know, swamp gas reflecting the light of Venus or whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> They're right. that, they're that, but they're they're part of it, like you know. Okay. Now I I've, I've definitely read some stuff where, um, you know, serious scientists said that there seems to be some connection between them, seismic vol and volcanic activity, mm -hmm. and maybe the release of plasma or something to do with strong magnetic fields or something like that. You know. Okay. Um. So that's something to bear in mind as well. You know, but anyway, these orbs, these orbs appear and they're always dancing off in the distance. Sometimes they'll whiz by you, you know, as with Ellen's experience. Yeah. And they're kind of ubiquitous. They're always there, you know, they always seem to be there. Are they there in the daytime or just the nighttime? Um, they're usually they're there in the kind of twilight and in the nighttime, hmm. you know, okay. but it's it's you the all of the stories that I've heard with them seem to take place in the night time, you know? Yeah. Um, so as we were saying, he, the family breed top notch cattle, you know, <laughs> the, but that's what the, they, I know. I just remembered your limousine joke. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Surely the best cow pun ever. Um, yeah. Yeah. Surely is also a pretty good cow. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so, so like, when you're breeding these cows as well, you know, like, it's about quality and not quantity, you know? And each one of these, each one of these individual cows can be sold for thousands of dollars, you know? Okay. Because you're, you're improving the genetic stock of your herd. Hmm. Um, particularly if you're, if you're talking about bulls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because they can... Uh, no pun intended, disseminate their genetics easier. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I am I grew up in the countryside, so I don't know if you've ever seen a, like a, a bull catalogue. Have you ever seen one of those? Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, these, <laughs> these bulls are, they are jacked. They are way bigger than <laughs> you might think. They are monsters. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what he's breeding. You know, okay. And obviously, the, the 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 cows are important, but the bulls are kind of the more important ones. You know, <laughs> in terms of money, like he can right, he, he can sell their seed, so to speak. Uh -uh. Um. So they, what was I going to say? Yeah. So obviously, you're you're out there all the time, making sure that. That, that these cattle are, you know, safe. they're safe and they're they're taken care of, you know? Yeah. And it, it makes it, it, this is kind of why it's a difficult job because like, if it's terrible weather, that's when you actually need to go out there and just make sure they're okay, you mm, know? Mm. Maybe you need to take them inside. Maybe you just need to make sure that, that they're all all right, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's the kind of weather where you'd be inclined to be like, ah, oh, it's not worth going out, is it? It's, it's, it's terrible, you know? <laughs> You have to be hard to be a cattle farmer. Yeah, yeah. So um, they they moved into the ranch in kind of the autumn, you know? Okay. And they had that terrible experience with the massive wolf and everything like that. Um, and it's it's getting into the winter and there's like a big kind of snowstorm. They've been there maybe 
four or five months now, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's a big snowstorm, and he goes out to he goes out on horseback to check on the cattle. Mm -hmm. And he's walking along, and he's doing a head count, and he's like, "Okay, I've got all of them. There's one missing. Oh, there's some tracks, you know." Yeah. And he starts following the tracks through the snow, and they're obviously really easy to to follow because it's a couple of inches of snow on the field, mm -hmm. and you can see that the the cow is it, it's almost like it's being chased by something. You know, oh. because the the footprints are deep and, and, and gashing in the snow, you know. Right. And he, he rides along and then suddenly, after about maybe 40 or 50 yards, poof, they're gone. <gasps> they just go from a, a frightened running cow to just disappeared. Weird. Yeah. And he stops on the horse and he looks all around and then he takes a good wide berth around the, the end of the footprints mm -hmm. so that he's not miss, missing anything. And he just keeps circling the area for about 25 minutes and he cannot find any sign of the cow, what happened to the cow, mm. just the footprints in suddenly in the snow. It was beamed up. Yeah. He goes, he goes back to the house then, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I... Do, we, we talked about like that. Usually when you're... When you have a, a, a herd of cattle like... You would expect like a kind of a a rate of maybe five percent of them suffering injuries or death, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if they're on open range and stuff like that. Whereas these guys, because they're breeding cattle and because they're serious about it, they don't like to lose even one percent, you know. Of course. Now they have a total herd of about forty, or sorry, forty of each, so about eighty eighty cows, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so two of each bulls and then about 30 something um, cows and calves in various uh, stages. Okay. So um, he goes back and this cow is gone. You know, he spends yeah. the 25 minutes trying to ascertain what happens. He rides up and down the range trying to find it. He cannot find hide nor hair of this cow, <laughs> you know. So he goes back to the house and he's really despondent you know mm -hmm. and he's out on the porch and he's looking over at the corral and there's those two fine black angus and two fine semorel bulls you know nearly 20,000 worth of bulls inside that corral mm -hmm. and he looks off in the distance to the cottonwood tree trees and takes a sip of his beer and he says you know could all of this be related to the rip in time and space above the cottonwood trees? <laughs> you know, the area, <laughs> the area above the cottonwood trees where reality itself is rendered. Is asunder. that what he was thinking to himself? Um, yeah. Did I not mention that there's a rip in time and space above the cottonwood trees? No. Yeah, there's a rip in time and space above <laughs> the cottonwood trees. I forgot to say that. Um, <laughs> this is hard to get your head around now. It, it appears sometimes, right? Above the cottonwood trees, they say it's about maybe uh, 20 or 30 yards off the ground. We, I gather a yard is about a meter. So it's about maybe 50 or 60 feet in the air, you know. And it's it, it changes in size. Um, but it, they describe it like a flat window, you know, like a window pane. Okay. Like it's two dimensional. So if you're sitting on the porch and looking down the cottonwood trees, mm -hmm. you can see, you can see this kind of orange. It's kind of a different color from the rest of the sky, but it has a very definite kind of circular shape to it. And it's like looking inside a tunnel. You know, you can see it. Sometimes the sky on the other side of this is a different color. And um, once they saw a sunrise at night through this hole. In, in time and space like what? Um, yeah but you can only see it from a very narrow angle because it's two dimensional and if you're on the other side of it it just looks like a kind of orange cloud at sunset and then just like an ordinary dark cloud at night okay and am I explain it's hard to understand what what it is but it's it's basically a two-dimensional rip in time and space you know okay and he's looking at it and he's like you know, I suspect that a lot of the weirdness <laughs> might be coming <laughs> from this rip in time and space, you know, <laughs> where reality itself is is 
rent asunder, you know? Jacked. Where yeah, <laughs> where it's just destroyed. So he goes into the he goes into the house and he gets the um kind of night vision scope that he has, you know? Okay. Um from one of his rifles and he comes out and there's a, a tree stump in the middle of the yard that's about four foot tall. Mm -hmm. And he goes out and he leans against that and he starts looking at the, the hole in time and space through it. And he said that the you could you could distinctly make out that even though it's you can only view it from this angle, that there's it was like looking into a tunnel. You know mm. what I mean? Okay. Um, I guess almost like like Wiley e. Coyote might draw on a on a two dimensional on a wall. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it looked like that, and he said, like you could clearly see the sides of it um, drawing away, you know. Okay. And um, he's looking at it, and then as he's looking at it, a thing comes out of it, <gasps> like one of these little balls. Oh. And then an, another time he's looking at it, and he swears that an onion flies out of it. <laughs> A, a, a kind of a round bulb shaped thing with loads of different <laughs> layers and it just kind of comes out of it you know are they having like veg veggie wars <laughs> I don't know like, in another dimension like what it's how not, does it <laughs> it's not it, I mean when they describe it you're when they're describing it in the book and you're reading about it you're like your jaw is on the floor you know <laughs> but again they're the only like they're the only ones that claim to have seen this. No one from do you know what I mean? They're right. the, they're the guys that claim to have seen this, and it's not there all the time. It's only there sometimes. <laughs> and um, one day he's out on the out on the porch, you know, mm -hmm. and um, he's got the scope, and his um, three hounds are there with him, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, like these are serious hounds now, you know, they're cattle rustling hounds. So they're not, they're tough, you know? Yeah. Tough, well-trained working dogs, you know? Okay. Like fearless and like they'll mess with a 2,000 pound bull. like. Yeah. And the blue orbs appear down at the cottonwood trees. Mm-hmm. And they start going around doing their little dance, you know? Mm-hmm. Up and down. Now he describes these as being somewhere between the size of a baseball and a basketball. Okay. So I'm going to say that's a volleyball. <laughs> if we're going for sports balls. That's it's going to be volleyball size. So it's the size of a volleyball, right? Right. But this time it starts to do something unusual like usually it just dances around the cottonwoods and you can see it weaving in and out between the trees, you know? Mm -hmm. But this time it starts to come up the track and into the farmyard. And it starts to approach the house. Mm -hmm. And as it gets closer, the hounds are, are peaked, you know. Okay. And they, they, they put up their ears and they get their hackles up. And they start barking like crazy. Mm -hmm. And running down around and basically going at and trying to warn off this, this blue ball of light, you know. Yeah. And the blue ball of light starts swooping in on the dogs. And the dogs are jumping up and they're snapping their maw at the ball, you know. And then it'll, it'll, at the last minute, it'll veer off in the other direction. And then the other dog will, and it's, it's toying with the dogs, essentially, you know. Did they bring a, an onion through the portal? <laughs> to, at the to, to, to make them cry. <laughs> Five dimensional tears. Um, so the, after the dogs are getting further and further away, and he suddenly realizes that, that this blue ball is not only playing with the dogs, but it's luring them out of the yard, you know? Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to... So he up. starts shouting at the dogs to come back, but they won't come back. They're absolutely enraged at this ball and its <laughs> presumptuousness being inside in their yard, you know? Yeah. And they start barking at it like crazy. And the ball is weaving its little dance and drawing them deeper and deeper, like further and further away from the house, mm -hmm. down the yard, out of the gate, into the cottonwoods, they're barking, they're barking like crazy, he loses sight of them, he starts walking down towards the road, and then suddenly he hears these frightened yelps, <gasps> and complete silence. No, no. Yeah. Dog death? And the ball is gone. And he gets down about halfway <gasps> between the house and the kind of gate, you know, yeah. that leads to the cottonwoods. Yeah. And, you know, he thinks the better of it. <laughs> 
He's like, I'm going to sleep on this. <laughs> and I'll get up in the morning and investigate. Okay. So he gets up in the morning and he goes down to the cottonwoods to investigate. Mm -hmm. And there in the cottonwoods are these three circular burnt patches of grass mm -hmm. with a pile, like a dirty, greasy pile of bones in the middle of it. Like, oh my God, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, just zapped. Oh, poor three puppies. fine dogs. Three lovely hounds. No. Zapped. Yeah. Um, now, that kind of puts him on edge. <laughs> um, and I'll point this if, out again. If the, if the portal hadn't already. I'd have been on edge at the Massive Wolf. <laughs> yeah. I'd have been on edge right there when the Massive Wolf rocked up. And Ham. <laughs> Just... The face of the kettle. Hum. Yeah, it's just a, this a massive wolf comes and, and bites one of my calves in the face. I would be, I'd be out of there, especially if it's the biggest wolf ever. And you go to like, you go to the local police and they're like, there hasn't been a wolf here since 1925. Do you know? <laughs> so one, one day he's out in a rainstorm, you know, in the bad weather and he's checking on the cattle again. And he's out there and one of the, one of the cows has gone into a ditch um, and he's at the time he's trying to um, lasso. Uh, is that the right word? Lasso. 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 He's trying to lasso uh, a wayward calf. So he's riding along and he's, you know, throwing the rope over his head and spinning it around and he's firing it out at the at the cow, at the calf, you know. Yee! And he can hear the cow in the ditch and he's like, well, she's not going anywhere. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this calf and secure it and then I'll go back and help her. Mm -hmm. So he was gone for maybe about five minutes and he managed to get the calf, bring it back in, secure it like. And then he went over to the ditch and the cow is just lying in the ditch. <sighs> and he's like, this does not. And it's a bad rainstorm. like. Mm -hmm. And he's like, this does not look good. Like she's not moving or anything. Mm -hmm. And he gets down in the ditch to, to check her. Mm -hmm. um, and then he notices that um, there is a big circle cut in the back of the cow. A, a circle, yeah. Like wow. a perfect circle what? cut around the cow's um, tail. And when he goes and has a look at it, it's almost like, do you know those apple corers? Yeah. That take out the core of an apple. Oh. It's like that. So there's like a, a, a circular hole at the back and just basically internal organs and everything have all been removed almost like you had an apple corer yeah <laughs> it's so, like a boba straw <laughs> yeah so this this really Ugh. this really kind of uh, this really upsets him you know yeah um uh, because this isn't the first time that there's been an unusual death um but it is the first time that it definitely you, you definitely could not mistake this for anything other than high strangeness. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is some weird stuff. Yeah, that's not... Like, get Linda Moulton Howe on the blower right now. I think we got some cattle mutilation. <laughs> so, this is kind of a pattern that gets repeated a lot. Okay. And of the 80 cattle that they moved into the ranch with six months beforehand, um, they've lost 14 at this stage. Wow. Yeah. They're like, this is a new record by a, like, they are absolutely hammering it, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. um, so, as I said, he's he's very upset. Right. They're more or less facing financial ruin here, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. Because you're, you're, you're investing a lot of time and energy in these cattle and they're supposed to bring you a return. And now every time, you know, like every one of these that gets cored, that's that's a couple of grand out the door. <laughs> yeah, when they get cored, like that's a that's a couple of grand out the door, you know. Um, there's so this is all starting to happen, but like fourteen cattle, the blue orbs and the wolves and stuff, mm -hmm. like people are starting to talk in the locality. Mm -hmm. You know, it, there's a rumor got out that there are weird happenings up at the Gorman Ranch, and everyone is. Real upset. Yeah. Okay? Okay. And that's when this guy shows up at the ranch. Is he a ufologist? Uh, no. A zoomorphologist? No. Crypt he shows up and your man kind of describes him as this tall, 
a blonde, shaggy haired guy wearing do you know who I pictured? Did he have a suit in an R V? No, 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 no. He was <laughs> he was wearing like a colourful shirt and some shorts and like you know, this kind of thing. It's getting into spring now. You know? Ah, okay. Another thing about the cattle mutilations, before we move on in a wee bit here, another thing about the cattle mutilations is they usually happen during inclement weather. And that's usually like snowstorms or uh, uh, very often thunderstorms. They're uh, associated with thunderstorms and stuff like that. Okay. You know, but also with snowstorms and stuff. They seem to happen when the weather is bad. Mm -hmm. um, so this guy shows up and I swear to God, when they were describing it, all I could picture was Matthew McConaughey rocking up to the farm. <laughs> and he's like, all right, all right, all right. I heard you got weird happenings, you know. <laughs> And at first, um, Mr. Gorman, Tom, is going to give him short shrift, you know? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, buddy. And he said, well, you know, I'd like to come and meditate on it, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, I'm always drawn to places with, with powerful energies. And, you know, I want to get to feel for it. <laughs> so he's like, you know what? Why not? So he's like, okay, you can come and meditate on the land, you know? So they get into the guy's car. He gets he t he ties up his horse, and they get into the guy's car. He had a horse. Yeah, he's all. Tom is always on horseback. Oh right, yeah. Sorry. He's a rancher. Like, Tom, I was like, I thought the dude rocked up on a horse. No, the dude rocked up in like a car. So they're so they get so he meets him at the gate, and the guy the guy drives into the property, and they they drive along, and um, they finally get to an area where the guy goes, this. The energy here is so good. I'm going to meditate here, you know. So he gets out of the car. Watch out, you might get cored. He gets out of the car and he walks over and, you know, there's like a cusp of trees and stuff um, surrounding one side of the field. And he goes and sits under a very big tree and he starts the meditating process. Mm -hmm. And Tom said he's like, Tom and his son Tad as well is, uh, uh, yeah, um, He's, they're both kind of basically about 30 or 40 yards away from your man, just kind of watching him do his thing, you know? Yeah. And he's meditating a bit away, like, and then they, they see this, um, more like they feel this energy. Mm -hmm. And they turn around just in time to see something dart out of the woods. But they can't really see anything. Hmm. They can see the grass move. And they can see the trees and bushes shaking from where it left the woods. Mm -hmm. And it travels at incredible speed. Like, they're talking about it. it's running at, like, 60 or 70 miles an hour, you know? Mm -hmm. And you can just... But you can't see it. It's almost like the area where this thing is is pixelated. Huh. And it runs right up to the guy's face who's meditating. He's got his eyes closed. He's counting his breaths. And then it just screams like this crazy scream that's halfway between a, a wolf and a bear right in the guy's face. <laughs> and then it breathes like... <sighs> and it turns around and runs back into the woods. Okay. And the guy that's meditating gets up and he is in hysterics. <laughs> you know? He's absolutely in hysterics. He grabs hold of, um, of Tom like... And he's holding on to him, and Tom's like, you're okay, you're okay. And the guy's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, this place is cursed, there's bad energy, bad vibes everywhere. And Tom's <laughs> like, okay, um, please let go of me. You are, you, you're, you're holding me like a sissy girl, and I'm a big, tough rancher. I am not comfortable with this. Pull yourself together, man. And the guy says, just help me to my vehicle and get me off this property. I need to go. So the guy, they get in the car and the guy, the guy basically won't stop babbling like, and they drive, they drive to the edge of the property, really dangerous and distraught like, and they basically just let him out the gate and they shut the gate and they can drive off down the road <laughs> in a, in a state of absolute fear and panic. Bad vibes, man. Bad vibes. So that's the, that's, that's the meditating guy. Now, these are a lot of freaky things to have happened, you know, and they're really scared. They've lost all their cattle. Um, they honestly don't know what to do. Huh. So one day, Tom and Ellen are out about dusk, you know. Yeah. And they're just riding back up to the farm and they get to the cottonwoods and they're going riding up just to 
get through that gate and into the farmyard. And then next thing you know, this blue volleyball appears on the horizon, just over the ridge. Mm -hmm. And it starts to float over towards them. <gasps> And they describe it, this is the closest they've ever got. It comes to within about 10 feet of them. Mm -hmm. And they get this absolute feeling of just like unexplainable fear. I was about to say, yeah. Uh, like just absolute. Like blood curdling kind of. Breaking it. Your blood runs cold. Yeah. You've got the sweats. You're panicked. You, your fight or flight responses, you're being, adrenaline is rushing into your system. Mm -hmm. And they're both sitting there on horseback and they say that this thing just basically floats up to them nice and chilled out, about the size of a volleyball. Mm -hmm. And when you look into it, you know when you look at lava, the way it's bubbling up and there's all these different colours and it's swirling around like that? Mm -hmm. You can picture that? Mm -hmm. It's like that, but it's basically a ball of blue lava. Ooh. Like inside this ball and it's it's undulating and it's 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 swirling and everything you know yeah and um they just sit there on their horses they look at it and then the the ball of of blue kind of swirling thing just kind of moseys off hmm. yeah and they get back to the house after some time to collect themselves and ellen is like we're getting the hell out of here. <laughs> so at this stage now, um, they have actually been in the newspapers. Okay. For the strange goings on at the ranches and stuff like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when um, your friend of mine, Robert Bigelow, contacts them. Oh. And he started this, um, he has started this Institute for Discovery Sciences. And he makes a deal with the Gormans where he buys the property off them mm -hmm. for 200,000. Now that's, that's got to be bargain basement stuff really, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's almost 500 acres. There's three buildings on there, yeah. you know? It's very cheap. I mean, even with a rip in the space of time and reality and <laughs> like, you know, regular um, existential issues. <laughs> Does he know? do the thing where it's like, now that you've, made it public that there's weird stuff going on. No one's going to buy this place, but I'll buy it from you. He buys it for them. It's He buys it off them for 200000 and I think that's a bit crazy. So they they actually buy a smaller ranch about 25 miles away. Okay. Um, and they take their cattle, uh, minus the 14 that are dead, and they move them onto that ranch. Okay. And then um, Bigelow starts making um, arrangements to move in there. You know, mm. now I was listening to Colin Kelleher um, talk because Colin Kelleher and George Knapp have a new book out not but two or three months ago. Yeah. And it's called Skinwalkers at the Pentagon. <laughs> and it's about, you know, cover ups and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, during this interview, they were saying that before they moved into the ranch, before the Nids guys moved, moved into the ranch, mm -hmm. Bigelow hired these three um, specialists shall we say. Okay. And they were kind of like special forces guys, um, a marine and two special forces kind of guys, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're all, they all have experience in, in kind of the intelligence field, you know? Mm -hmm. But not the intelligence analyst field, like the kind of deploying sensors and, you know, being recon guys and stuff like that. Right. So they all have experience in that. Um, so he basically employs them to go down and scope the ranch. Hmm. So they arrive down and they've got night vision goggles and EF readers and all sorts, you know? Yeah. And they basically go scoping the ranch. And then one night, um, they're only down there for about an hour or two, or for about a day or two, sorry. And they start scoping out the ranch and um, they hear something attracts their attention down the road just after twilight. Mm hmm. So they start kind of working their way down with military precision, you know, mm -hmm. covering each other, looking through their scopes, their night vision scopes, and then moving to a new position, cover and, you know, all this. Um, and as they get, as they walk down the road closer and closer to where they think that this noise is coming from, you know, mm -hmm. um, they, they start to feel 
very similar to what um, Tom and Ellen felt that night. Like right. just this absolute, That's like red. petrifying fear. Yeah, and they're just they're just dread. And down the road, one of them has a fancier um, night vision type goggles, you know. Mm-hmm. And he so he can basically kind of tune the wavelengths that he can see in. And as they get closer and closer, he's kind of changing between the wavelengths to try and get a clearer picture. Mm -hmm. And in certain wavelengths that are kind of in the electromagnetic region, Mm -hmm. um, he can just see this black oval that's just sitting there in the middle of the road. Whoa. And they are absolutely bricking it. Like, they are very petrified. Mm -hmm. And like, bearing in mind now, these are special forces dudes, like, you yeah. know, like they are, you know, they're literally trained to take their fear and push it down, you know, mm-hmm. and do what, do whatever needs to get done. So one of them is like, okay, we're going to go on three. And they start <laughs> trying to move closer to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like every time they get closer to it, it takes more and more energy to push that fear down and they don't know where the fear is, you know? Okay. Because the guy that can see it is like, you guys can't see this? It's like a black oval. But what is it? I don't know. It's just a black oval, <laughs> you know? It's not showing up in visible light or infrared or anything. Um, and anyway, they think the better of it and they're like, let's, let's go. <clears throat> let's go back to the house and like formulate a plan. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's get out of here. <laughs> so these these guys, anyway, they absolutely brick it and they have to pull out, you know? Like they bottled hard. Right. Um. So that's one of the stories he tells. Hmm. And then the NIDS guys, they move in and they set up loads of cameras and stuff like that. They're basically doing exactly what the guys on Skinwalker Ranch are doing, you know? Who are you going to call? Nids. Nids. <laughs> <laughs> so they're they're doing they're doing more or less the same thing, and then nothing really kind of happens, you know. They catch some they catch some orbs far off in the distance on camera, zipping through the cameras, you know, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But nothing's happening, and then um, they contact after about a month or two, I think, they contact um, Tom Gorman, and they say you know what's the crack here like shouldn't we be up to our oxters in weird happenings by now and he says well i mean we spent some time on there without the cattle and as soon as the cattle came in that seems to be when the weird stuff happened so then they say well how about we buy some cattle and you act as a ranch manager for us and He's obviously after losing 14 of his, you know what I mean? He, he needs the work. He needs the income streams. Okay. So he's like, okay, I'll do that. So he arrives up to the ranch. So now there's loads of cameras and he's staying on the ranch, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, every night though, he drives back home like the 25 miles. Yeah. Yeah. So he's staying on the ranch. Um, like basically weird stuff to, starts happening, you know? Huh. Nothing, at first, nothing as weird as was reported before. Like one night, there's there's three cattle, and or three calves that he separated. I don't know why, but they're in a barn. And uh, when he gets up in the morning, one of them has had its ear shredded, and the other two calves have these round holes in their eyelids. Ugh. So when they blink, they can still see out through their Ew. eyes. Baby. Like they're they've got these round holes in their eyelids, mm. and they call out they call out the vet, and the vet is like, I have no idea what this is. He's like, I think the holes in the ears you could do with a really sharp shears, like snip snip snip, but I don't know how you would cut holes in the eyelids of a calf. Ew. So he reports this to to the guys like Colin Keller and them, you know. Yeah. So then they're like, okay, well, it looks like stuff is happening. We need to move down to the ranch. So they move down to the ranch. Yeah. Okay. And they're down there. One day then another thing happens where um, he's, him and Ellen are, or sorry, he's, he, he yeah, him and Ellen actually are involved in the story. Um, do you remember the bulls, the really expensive bulls? 
Yeah. It's like twenty thousand dollars worth of bulls, like four of them. They're inside in the corral, yeah? And they go off to, to check on the cattle that are in the lower field or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they ride off. Um, it, this time they're actually in a in a car. Well, in a four by four, I would say, you know. Mm -hmm. So they ride, they, they go off in the car and they go down the lower field and they check on the cattle. Everything seems to be in order, mm -hmm. all present and correct, all look healthy. Okay. And they start driving back up to the corral, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and as they get up there, the corral is empty. Like the farmyard is quiet. The corral is empty. They can't hear a sound. It's There's like a an uneasy calm. Hmm. And he's like, oh, my God, my prize bulls. Where are they gone? What's going on here? You know, mm. now the corral is just, you know, it's a fenced in area beside the. Uh, yeah, it's like a holding area. Yeah, exactly. Beside the barn. And at one end of the corral, there's um there's a shed. But actually what it is, is it's an old trailer from, you know, from a flatbed. OK, from a truck. Yeah, from a fixed axle truck. You know, the ones, not the articulated ones. Not a lorry. It is a lorry. It's the back of a lorry. Okay. That they've just taken off the lorry and they put there. And you know, they use that. It's an 18 wheeler. It's not an 18 wheeler at all. It's just, it's an ordinary, like, like one of those, like a foot, like a HGV, what we call a heavy goods vehicle, you know, like a fixed axle heavy goods vehicle. Oh, where you can't take the back off. Okay. Yeah, and it's just the, gotcha. you know, it's the way they've got those boxes in the back of them. Okay, yeah. Like it's maybe, you know, it's going to be maybe 25 feet long by about 9 or 10 feet, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of, I, I didn't even know about that. But anyway. <laughs> no, I got you. Do you know what I mean? It's But it's one of those, it's a truck, like it's the cab, for, it's the back bit of a of a truck, like. Yeah. And so they've got that on the, pro they've got that there. And I guess they keep tools in it and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, whatever equipment you might be needing and it's in there. And they can't, they can't find the bulls anywhere. And they're like, oh, my God, what's going on? And then they look in there and there's the four bulls just lined up inside in that. <gasps> now, they were only gone for about 15 minutes. Um, oh, the, I think I saw video footage of the bulls. That. The bulls are in there and they're like completely catatonic. Yeah, they're like, they yeah. don't make any sound. There's, they're, just, they're not freaked out or anything. They're not they're freaked, freaked just... out. They're just staring into space right beside each other. Now... Bulls usually don't get on with other bulls as such. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they don't really. They're bullies. <laughs> They're bullies. <laughs> so as soon as they, as soon as they, like, basically open open the door of it, mm -hmm. the bulls go, the bulls snap out of it and they go bananas. Mm -hmm. And they start kicking the side of the lorry. And they can and, be quite dangerous. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like these are, these are 2,000 pound bulls. Like they're not, and you, I mean, you, like I said, you've seen those bull catalogs, like they are jacked. Like they're <laughs> huge animals. Like. <laughs> so they, they basically kick this lorry asunder pretty much, you mm, know, mm. and they go out through the side of it. But then, so he phones, he phones the NIDS guys and he's like, we've had an incident, you know, mm. and they come down and they just take photographs of everything and like, they say stuff like that, that only one of the doors of the cab was opened. And that's the one that that he opened, that Tom opened to look in and at the bulls, you know, mm -hmm. because there's cobwebs on the inside and it clearly hadn't been one side clearly hadn't been opened. And the other side is the only side that he opened. So now you're talking about trying to get these 2000 pound bulls and stack them like it's Tetris inside in the back of this cab. And right. um, it just seems so highly unlikely it can be done, you know? Yeah. There's loads of other incidences like that where they go to check on some cows in a field and then they go to a different area of the field and when they come back, the cows have moved a crazy distance in a very short period of time. Yeah. Um, the NIDS guys start talking to the neighbours and stuff and there's one neighbour, a rancher, that says that one day he went out to check on his cattle and one of them was out there and it was just lying on the ground with two broken legs. And he was like, what the... And he looked around and he couldn't really see any damage to the cow other than that its legs appeared to have been broken, you know, at the same position on both sides. Hmm. And just suddenly, and it was dead. There was no, hmm. you know, there was no struggle after it broke its legs. There was no footprints. There's no perdition. There's no scavengers coming up to it. It's perdition. Uh, like where there's a predators. There's no sign of predators. Oh. In there. Predation. <laughs> yeah, and um, 
Um, <laughs> Another word we pronounce differently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they they go and um, he he's like, okay, well, I'm going to have to move this cow, you know? Right. Gosh darn it. And off he goes to get his tractor, I guess. Okay. And he comes back with the tractor and the cow is gone. <gasps> and he's only been gone for five minutes. Right. So the cow with the two broken legs, no sign of footprints or anything, has just disappeared. And he's walking around the field and he's scratching his head. <laughs> and he's looking and he's like, I could have sworn it was right over there. <laughs> you know? And he's thinking, you know, am I hallucinating? Am I all right here? Yeah. And he goes into the house to get to get some water. And he looks out the window and there's the cow about 20 feet away from where it was when he saw it originally. About 15 feet away from his tractor, it's just reappeared in the field. Dead? And just as dead as it was previously. Whoa, what? And he goes back out. And now the two front legs are also broken. <laughs> okay, that's just weird. What the hell? No. For real, yeah. That can't be real. That has to be a setup. Like, he can't be saying that that... No. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Oh, my God. No. Um, so that's that's a, that's a neighboring farmer, but there's a load of stories like that around that's... around. Skip. There's too many to go into, you know. Right. But I'll tell you another story. So as long as it's not eyelids again. It's not eyelids this time, no. Um. So this time, in at this stage, uh, Tom and the Nids guys are inside in the ranch house, you know. Okay. And it's kind of late in the evening. It's getting far midnight. Yeah. And. They hear the cows, which are in a field close enough to the ranch house. Mm -hmm. They hear the cows starting to go absolute bananas. Mm -hmm. You know, something's upset them. Yeah. 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 So they rush out and um, they hop into the all-terrain vehicle mm -hmm. and they start bombing it across the fields. Yeah. yeah? And, um, they, they, you know, in their, search, in their searchlight from the vehicle, they can see some of the cattle and they seem upset. But they're not stampeding or anything. Okay. But they're upset by something. And then Tom looks up in the tree and up about 40 feet above the ground, he can see something perched in the tree <gasps> with yellow. Like he can just make out the, the black mass of it. But it's these yellow, these two yellow eyes that really takes his attention. Is it Mothman? So he goes, <laughs> he goes full... Gulf Breeze like UFO. Rambo. He pulls out his gun. <laughs> Shakes it. <laughs> he pulls out his gun. He's, he leans on the door of the all-terrain vehicle. Mm -hmm. And he shoots twice. And he's like, I think I shot it. And the guys in the vehicle are going, shot what? That thing with the yellow eyes in the tree, you know? Yeah. And they're all like, oh my God. And then they run over and... Um, <laughs> they run over and they can't find anything under the tree. And mm. he's like, I'm sure I shot it. You know? <laughs> And then he looks in the trees or he looks into the scrub and he's like, oh, my God. And he lets off two more shots. And they're like, what was that? And he goes, it was like a giant dog type thing. Like it's a 400 pound dog right there in the tree. It ran off. I'm, I'm sure I hit it, though. And then they run over there and they can't find the dog either. Of course. Yeah. And um, they can't find any footprints or anything. But they do find on the ground where he claims that he that he shot the thing in the tree. Mm -hmm. They do find two lone kind of talon marks almost like something had alighted before its wings took the weight you know what I mean oh. and it had just grazed the snow um, it's Mothman that's what I think too I think it's, Mo <laughs> I think it's Mothman I think it's Mothman yeah Mothman's trying to clear the air because they said that it had um, it had backward turned claws yeah. It's like Mothman. Yeah. There's there's loads there's loads of other stories as well, like about all of this. The 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 thing as well is that the these Nids guys, they don't actually see anything as much as Tom. Like Tom is the one that sees all of this stuff. You know? Mm -hmm. They catch the strange orbs, you know? And they can see them occasionally in the distance. They also they also using their fancy uh, science equipment, they also managed to pick up an awful lot of electromagnetic anomalies, hmm. you know? Yeah. Now, this is something that you'll see in um, that Skinwalker Ranch thing that they've got on Sky or HBO or wherever it is, you know? Yeah. 
And that's something that you'll see, that they pick up all of these weird electromagnetic anomalies and stuff. Like they were saying that, do you remember when the bulls got into the, ended up mysteriously in the in the cab of the truck and all that? Yeah. Yeah, when they went and they started, um, they went and, and did like kind of sensing on it. Mm-hmm. And they found that it it was weirdly magnetic. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, one night, the lads from MIDS are out. And they're using um, their night vision cameras. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah. And this is down by um, where a lot of the stuff seems to be focused is like, they call it residence number two, but like nobody's lived there since the 1930s, you know? Yeah. And it's basically a shack on the property. But it seems to be where a lot of the stuff is focused. It seems to be one of the epicenters. And they're down there and they're using the night vision goggles. And one of them is like, no, nah, can we see anything? No, everything's clear. Yeah, that's fine. He's just doing a watch, you know. And then suddenly, he stops communicating with everyone on the radio, and he starts like whimpering and stuff. And he's got that fear, you know, the fear that oh, yeah. that they were talking about. He's got like this extraordinary fear. And then later on, when they get him back to the place and they like review the footage and talk to him about it, mm-hmm. what he had actually seen was a portal open up in front of the house and a silhouette of like a black hairy mass like a wolf man or something step out of the portal Hmm. and scurry off into the trees (laughs) so interdimensional hairy beings are entering our world in Utah it seems to be the conjunction of the spheres, yeah. It seems to be that, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Um, it, it, it seems to be that the fabric of reality itself has changed. Um, but that's, I mean, like, that's, that's kind of... That's pretty much all I have to report. I know there's more stories of, about NIDS. Yeah. But I haven't, like, full disclosure, I haven't actually managed to read all of the book yet. Um, and How far are you now? Ah, uh, I mean, if I said half ways, I'd be kind of lying. <laughs> I'm about, I'm about, but I hear that all of the juicy stuff happens because like basically the last third of it is them trying to explain, trying to come up with explanations for all this, you know? Right. Which so I, what do you, what do you think so far? If you had to put a logical explanation onto it. Um, it, it's a weird, spooky place, you know? Yeah. Um, none of the... Nobody really, no no humans are harmed in the making of it, do you know? Mm. They absolutely, they do claim that they felt some kind of existential dread and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But they're not hurt, it's only animals. And, um... I don't know if that makes it any better, but... Like, <laughs> I think Robert Bigelow and his crew, they were there from, like, 1998 until about... In the early noughties, like 2004, you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then 2005, Kelleher and George Knapp bring out this documentary. Now, I've heard George Knapp say that he spent a lot of time on Skinwalker Ranch and he never experienced anything, you know, even weird lights in the but sky. But it's just where the, where the cattle... It seems to be focused on the cattle, yeah. Could it not just be lightning strikes? A hundred percent. I mean, like, I am, I have, I have never been even remotely convinced of any of this um, cattle mutilation stuff. Do you know? Because, like, they're like, oh, how could you get such surgically precise um, cuts? And it's like, are you... Lightning. Are you... No, but, like, all of the stuff happens in the high desert. Yeah. Where it's cold and the air is dry and then it's warm you know right right like i could totally see a cut turning into a like what you would say is a surgical incision you know pretty quickly like Mm. um now all right i don't know i mean like a lot of it is guff isn't it because like basically there it's like come here i would recommend anyone to read the book it's it's a real like that the, the slightly more than half of it that I've read has just been, you're just like... <laughs> the slightly more than half. The slightly more than half of it that I've just read has been so entertaining because you're like, 
whoa, a rip in time and space, you know, and all this. It's, I was not expecting that. It's I'm just really, it's a, it's a lot of fun, you know. Um, I feel like if you gave it to, you know, like Stephen King or something, you know. Has he not already made some stuff like that? I, he, I think he might have used Skinwalkers in some of his books, yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing about it then is that, like, Bigelow buys it for 200000 I've read that number several places. Mm -hmm. I believe it. I might even have read that number in this book, you know? Okay. Then um, this guy, is his name Fugel? Fogel? The guy that, that owns it, like that bought it so that he could make the Skinwalker Ranch thing on TV. Yeah. He bought it from Robert Bigelow about three or four years ago for 5.3 million. Wow. Now that's a pretty good return. Who on, made the profit that there? That is huh? a good return on investment right there. You know? Hollywood, man. Yeah, and I mean, now he's got all these lads on it. Uh, you know, it's like, it's just became a legendary kind of place. Um, the, the, the interesting thing about it, though, is that your man, um, Tom Gorman, not his real name, He's never really capitalized on it, so I don't get the impression that he's trying to cash in, you know what I mean? Maybe he's just a... No offense here, but, like, do you think he's just kind of a crap cradle farmer? Or maybe he just had bad luck, you know? I, maybe there was a lot of stressful stuff going on at the time, and, you know, he's drinking a little too much, and, you know... I... Do you know, it's the it's the story of him shooting the Mothman and then shooting the dog in the in the woods... Because nobody else sees these things. No. You know? And then they offer as proof that it was weird is that there were no footprints. And it's like, okay, how about this? Yeah. <laughs> Tom is just seeing things and shooting them. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Um, they're trying to tap into that whole, like, oh, you know, Native American... Uh, kind of like trying to make a boogeyman out of their culture or something which is well that's kind of insulting but i just i just thought it was i thought it was really interesting when they were when they do the section on what's a skinwalker you know mm -hmm. and they talk to anthropologists and um tribal leaders and stuff mm -hmm. and they talk they talk to one tribal leader guy and he's you know and they're saying oh it's suggested that like either the skinwalker was put there by your people to curse um, you know, the, the to curse the white man really for for pushing you further and further to the edge of your own land, you know, of like disenfranchising you essentially, mm -hmm. and and making you know signing a deal of the reservations and then making it smaller and smaller. And he was like going, "Yeah, that's fine, except I don't know anyone that's going to make a deal with a skinwalker, you know." Right. And also, you can't make a deal with a skinwalker. They don't want earthly stuff. No. You know. Um, like becoming this becoming this creature that's that's their reward you know yeah and he also uses that to poo poo that it might have come from an earlier period you know right like he was like they, like there's no one in any of the other tribes and in my tribe that would do anything other than kill someone if they suspected them of being a skinwalker yeah in the 1870s as well I went down a rabbit hole here as well <laughs> in the 1870s um after the after this they signed they signed the the reservations you know the kind of treaty we'll say okay they signed that in um 1868 and then by the 1870s they were being progressively pushed further and further off the land with the with this gilsonite and stuff like that that they discovered you know right and then there was this period in the 1870s i, I think i have i got i hope i have the facts right here um sometime in the 1870s there was a thing called the Skinwalker Witch Hunts, where there was a rumor that they had found a corpse buried, and that in the corpse's stomach was a copy of the, um, a copy of the treaty, but you know wrapped up in things like that are ceremonial, you know it was magic, and it started this kind of backlash within within the culture, where there was this witch hunt. And yeah. People were being accused of um, using bad magic or bad medicine to 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 push them off their land and being in league with the with the white settlers and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so that in itself is is interesting, you know. Yeah.
Um, I it mean, sounds like a setup too. I, I mean, I look. I looked into it. There's, I mean, there's a Wikipedia entry on it, and it was. I kind of went down that that rabbit hole for a while. And, mm -hmm. um, interesting. Well, I thought it was interesting. Yeah. Because it's not. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's. I. I mean, I don't. I, I don't really want to get into it, or because it's obviously. Um, it's not my history, and it's such a. It's such a, d a dark part of American history. You know? Exactly. Yeah. If anybody is. Um, if anybody has knowledge and would like to share it, um, please let us know. Like, give us direction and let us know if if you're willing, because I think we would be interested in that side of it. Mm. Um, but I think that's all we have time for today. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to add? I don't. I don't think so. No. No. We just hit the hour mark. So. Oh, did we? <laughs> yeah. No. I think. I think. I think that's about it for Skinwalker Ranch. Like it's. It's an interesting. No, there's more. Oh, there is more. Like, but it's. I mean, it's an interesting story. But I don't. There will be more. I just. Right. Do, 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 a part three. I thought we were going for four parts. Oh, are we? <laughs> <laughs> You're not finished reading that book yet. <laughs> I heard someone told. I heard that it was that it it gets. It's not as fun in the last um, third of it or whatever. Oh really? Yeah, that's what I heard. Anyway. Well, in that case, well, we'll see, <laughs> right? Huh? <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. We could talk about the show, maybe. Um. Yeah, I mean the show is. You know, it's so cookie cutter reality TV show. Like they're churning these out these days, you know. Yeah. Where they're, but like it, it is definitely more entertaining than a lot of them, you know. Um. <laughs> We're not going to talk about the ones that you've seen. You've been watching before. Have, have you seen a few of them? No, I mean like Pawn Stars and. Ah oh, yeah yeah yeah. Ugh. I just like I like I like those shows where they find stuff and look at them like a, like American Pickers or whatever like but every time they have a successful every time they have a successful show someone just comes up and they just make hundreds of the same thing do you know what I mean Yeah like, exactly Well I can't find the next symbol so we're just going to wrap it up Where is that symbol What's it look like It's a U-turn symbol This one Oh man really <laughs> Yeah that one mm. Anyway Wow, the, we got a load done. I think the skinwalker is uh, is clouding your mind. It is. Um, yeah, I'm almost finished with the section, which is awesome. Yeah. So if you weren't aware, this diamond painting is kimono, but by by Diamond Shop, and I'm doing this particular kit for the POC for Black History with. Mrs. Crochet a coffee, so I'll put the links to all that stuff down below. But this is what I have so far. She's a 30 by 85 and she's a smaller one on the website with the special treatment and I'll link that down below. But um, thank you for watching this video. We really appreciate it and we love all the comments. Yeah. And you're going to use your thing to like respond to comments. Okay. <laughs> because they love hearing from you. We should, we should, yeah, okay. But with that said, I will let you all go. Thank you so much for watching, for subscribing, liking, and the whole lot. Thank you very much, and we will see you all next week for something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.